Like people, businesses have their journey, their path, sometimes straight, but more often evolving, growing, and adapting to a changing world, creating the need for knowledge in areas like accounting, consulting, tax, technology, areas critical to your continued growth and success, all part of the journey, all part of what we do together with you. Because your success is the destination. MNP, wherever business takes you. We all need Canada's youth to succeed. We need youth to help design drones to put out forest fires and ensure artificial intelligence doesn't outsmart us all. We need youth to help cure the diseases we don't even know exist yet. We need new skills for a completely new job force. But we're not prepared. That's why RBC created Future Launch to empower Canadian youth for the jobs of tomorrow. Welcome to Python's Pet. Today we have Shawali Nadim with the Shakard, which makes taking out the garbage easier than ever. So Python, before I start, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. So show of hands, do you guys hate waking up early? Do you guys hate doing chores or maybe errands? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I hate waking up early and doing my chores. So you can imagine how annoying it must be to wake up in the morning just to take out the trash. And to make things even worse, in the wintertime, it's negative 20 degrees outside, so by the time you're done taking out the trash, you have to spend another five minutes just to cool down back inside. The point is, does something so simple as taking out the trash really take us 10 to 15 minutes? No, not with the all-new shot cart, which allows you to do it in 10 to 15 seconds. Pythons, my name is Shawal Nadim, and I'm the founder of Shot Cart. Shot Cart is simply a cart that allows you to store your blue bins, green bins, and garbage bags so that you can push it all out at once. It is equipped with industrial all-season wheels that can go through ice and snow in ease. The, one of the biggest issues with the uh, compost bins and recycling bins is that during harsh climate, and I'm talking about those really windy days, they're flying around everywhere making a mess and endangering the streets. So we solved this, we solved this problem by adding a locking system to the wheels of the cart and also making, make, making it out of durable material so it can withstand these harsh climate winds. Another really big issue is during the winter times, the driveway is full of ice, which can increase the risks of falling and slipping. So we solve this issue by making our cart heavier so the customer can use it as something to balance on as they're moving it. We want to make sure that we're providing our customers with not only a convenience, but we want to make sure that they're safe while they're doing that. So all the customer has to do is put the trash in the cart, push the cart, lock it, and they're good to go. 15 seconds rather than 15 minutes. Shawcart will be sold at Walmart, Home Depot, and Canadian Tire. The best thing about Shawcart is you don't have to buy separate bins. Your bins at home will fit perfectly. That is what the Shawcart is made for. We will be using social media to run advertisements. We, more specifically, we're going to be contacting influencers, uh, specific Canadian influencers and uh, YouTubers so that we can uh, promote our product. And also we're going to be running ads on Snapchat, Instagram, and YouTube. The best thing, uh, best thing about Shotcart is that it's unique. There's nothing like this out there, and which is why there's no competition for our type of product. And you might be wondering, maybe there's no competition because there's no need for it. But there have been lots of people jerry rigging their own type of cart, so it shows that this is a problem that can that this problem is an opportunity that we can use to satisfy a need. With five thousand dollars, I'll be building a prototype. This prototype will be used in my testing phase. The testing phase is where we test things like tough terrain and also high climate, things like that. Once the testing phase is done, we're going to make a sample cart. A sample cart is basically the basic cart that our customers will get, and we're going to make sure that it fits all of our personal criteria so that we can make the perfect cart. Once the perfect cart is ready, we're going to be going into the production phase. Production phase where we mass produce our product overseas and start selling it. It will be sold for $89.99 plus tax. and. The cost price for us to make it per unit is going to be about $35, which means that our markup percentage is 157%, which also means that in order for you to get your return on investment, we only have to sell 90 units. And in Halton alone, there are 115,000 households uh, 
with, that are using bins, which means 115,000 potential customers. And throughout Canada, there's millions, which means millions of customers. And our final, uh, you might be wondering what happens to those customers who have more bins than the card can actually hold. That's when we move on to our extension phase, where we're going to be selling, making and selling extensions. So say someone needs another blue bin cart slot, and we're just going to be able to sell those. They can click it right in, and they're good to go. And then we're going to be moving on to our final phase, which is where we make the whole thing fully robotic so that all you have to do is set the time and day, and the cart will do the rest. Python's my product is bringing a convenience to our society. So please join me on my journey to achieve this goal. We're joined with Michael Lammer, one of our Pythons for 2019. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. What made you want to become a Python this year? Oh, absolutely. It's a true pleasure to be here today. It's been great fun. Um, for me, there's really two things to it. So number one, when I think back to myself as a young teen getting started yeah. in, in business, um, in my first just job really, uh, the opportunities all came through local entrepreneurs in, in my hometown back in South Africa. Right. And, Without them, I wouldn't have had that start. So this is a way for me to, to give back. In my business, unfortunately, I can't hire teens into the business, but it gives an opportunity to, to give back in some form. And then secondly, I have four young kids myself, and I'm hoping that my participation today inspires them to, to participate later down the line as contestants. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we all appreciate you being involved as a Python, and I know the contestants were super pleased to hear your advice and feedback, mm -hmm. and were able to tweak some of their ideas. So what is one of the most important things that you would say to a young entrepreneur today? So I think for me as a, an entrepreneur, there's a lot of things that I kind of think through when starting out the business. And for sure. Big, big one would be timing. There's, yeah. there's always a, you know, a right time to start something, right time to start a business. So mm -hmm. really make sure you do your, your research beforehand. And then uh, you know, the second piece of advice would be don't underestimate the importance of good foundational experience mm -hmm. in, in some role, some sort of uh, workplace. In, in my opinion, the best place to start would be in a role that has you speaking to people, uh, a sales okay. role. The, any entrepreneurial role, doesn't really matter what you're doing, you always have to negotiate with people, build rapport, have those connections, and sales is a good place to start. Fantastic. So for all the students watching, soft skills and getting those foundations yep. are really important things. So thank you very much for joining us, Michael. Well, Pythons, taking out the garbage is something that you all do, and I'm sure it's something that's a weekly task. So as a as a millennial who's crazy about convenience, it's very appealing to me. Clinton, any questions? Great job, actually. I could have used your, uh, your product a couple days ago when I had my recycle bin propped up on my garbage can, which has wheels, and uh, it didn't go well. But uh, <laughs> uh, great, I really love the idea. And um, I guess my question for you is, uh, has anyone else come up with this idea? Is it patentable? Is it, you know, have you done your homework in terms of uh, the, the concept? Is it something that you can protect so it can't be easily knocked off? Yeah, so as far as I know right now, uh, first thing that I did when I found out the idea was to make sure, check online to see if there's anything like that. But online I couldn't find anything, and neither in the patent area. So with the $5,000, once we're done with our sample cart, the first thing we're going to do is actually make that patent so that our idea doesn't get stolen. Well, thanks for the perspective on that, Clinton. And uh, Agatha, what did you think about this uh, presentation and the concept itself? I think it's a great idea. I've seen um, a cart um, not as complex as yours, so I would love to see this uh, come to fruition. I'd love to buy one. Um, my question to you is you're going to need a lot more money to bring this to the marketplace. And um, I'm wondering if there is somebody you could partner with or what you're doing in terms of inv investors that would come in and help you build this. Um, and one thing that just sort of popped into my head was the Kickstarter camp campaign, right? Like you can raise money on something like that and kind of keep it to yourself. Um, what could you do in order to generate revenue or generate some money in order to bring this to the marketplace for real? Mm -hmm. So obviously, like you said, we can uh, go to more investors. Mm -hmm. uh, so as of right now, it's just bas a basic idea. but. As we get more money, we'll be able to create prototypes so that they can actually see what it looks like. Because obviously it's a promising idea, but we just need more money to uh, invest into it so that we can actually see it go through. And the GoFundMe apps are pretty good too. We can also try that. But we were thinking mainly going to investors because mm -hmm. that's like the main way to do it. And also partnering up with people who have like a really good marketing background so that, because this product's good, but we just want to make sure that our customers are being reached towards, right? Because 
Do you have anybody in mind in mind that you could partner with? As of right now, I don't have anyone in okay. mind. However, my father is also an entrepreneur, and uh, he knows lots of people. So I'm going to try them out first and see what they can do for me. Right. However, okay. if that doesn't work, then uh, we'll just do some more research and find someone. Sounds good. Awesome. So, Michael, what do you think? Any questions? I love the idea. Definitely see it, it going somewhere. Um, are there any restrictions from, from the city side when it comes to the actual waste collection? I, I know that I always see the little messages, don't put mm -hmm. your bags on the, on the snow banks and all these little yeah. things. Like, are there any restrictions on that side? Or? So, believe it or not, before we even added the wheel locking system, yeah. we actually had a locking system with the curb. So, mm -hmm. all you have to do is click it into the curb okay. and it locks perfectly in. But after some uh, back and forth emails with the city, they yep. didn't allow that. So that's why we had to move on to the wheel sink. But it's just, it doesn't take any more space than the normal bins right. do on the driveway. Right. So it should be perfectly fine to be there. Okay, excellent, good. Yeah. Well, clearly you're doing your homework. Uh, Glenn, what do you think? Any questions? Interesting. Um, <clears throat> so you mentioned Halton Region, and Halton Region has its method of uh, waste pickup. Mm -hmm. meaning blue bin boxes and certain wheeled items. Um, other mis municipalities have the same type of setup, but outside of this, munici this area, there is many different ways that waste is being uh, picked up. Right. Um, so currently, uh, I have six locations in the province of Ontario. I, I visit them frequently. And then I've had the opportunity to travel outside of this area into the United States and to other provinces. And I've, I'm, an, I'm an observant person, so I've noticed waste collection and how different municipalities do it. Mm -hmm. A lot that I've been to already have created, not what you're specific about, but they have a wheeled garbage bin. They have a heavy plastic with a lid on big it. Big one? Big ones. Yeah. And, and then the one operator truck comes with a pair of grips and puts it in the back, mm -hmm. all automated. When, and these municipalities or these counties have put millions of dollars into this system. How are you going to change that, their, I, the, the way that they do business or the way they do their collections? How is your product going to change them? Well, so first of all, having those really massive car, uh, bins, uh, it is beneficial, but there's also some uh, cons to that as well. Because think about it, uh, it's a really big cart and it's gonna be really hard to push through the snow and ice, and they're only plastic wheels, so it's gonna be really difficult to do something like that. And we're hoping that something like our cart can maybe change their mind, or maybe even have them relook the things that they're doing, because our cart will change the way we're gonna take out the garbage, and it has the same process, and it'll also keep jobs, right? Because they're only making it uh, one-man operated buses, or one-man operated garbage trucks, <laughs> so obviously there's gonna be loss of jobs because of that, so we're hoping to prevent that as well. That's something I looked into. And right as of now, all we can do right now is just move forward with our product and hopefully uh, prevent that from happening. Well, good luck. Yeah. Uh, it went pretty well. I think it did pretty good. Uh, I didn't mess up my script, uh, got all the questions right, and I also got lots of great feedback from the Pythons, which was one of the main things. I would say that you just, just you should just speak your mind, and Pythons, as scary as they might seem, they're really nice once you get to know them well, and you just gotta put your mind to it, because if you're an entrepreneur, then you're an entrepreneur, and nothing's gonna change that. So if you have an idea and you think it's good, then come up with it, because it could really change the way you look at things.